Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually gonna need some notes for this one because there's quite a lot to go through, so excuse the piece of paper. Right then, let's talk about ISO and why I actually think if you own a camera that's been made in the last five or six years, ISO might even be a myth and you almost, depending on what you're shooting, you can almost ignore it and just get on and enjoy your photography. So that's what we're talking about today. ISO as a myth. Um, a lot of people are scared, and I don't understand why people are scared of high ISO. Now, obviously you need to do some testing. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the different testing I've done, and how you should be doing those tests yourself. But people are scared to do uh, to shoot with high ISO, and they'll always compromise on other variables. So you've got your exposure triangle, you've got your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO, um, in this example. Um, now, people are, will, will often, compromise their shutter speed or their aperture so that they don't have to go above a certain threshold with an ISO that they're comfortable with. I've done loads of workshops and pretty much on every single workshop, if we stand there and we talk about the camera settings, we talk about what we need to be able to achieve a sharp um, sharp shot with, with depth of field, um, for example, F8 and say 250th of a second, 400th of a second, that sort of thing. I see so many of my clients on workshops shudder when we talk about using ISO 3200 because that's what we need to get the histogram to the right. So if you don't know what the histogram is, I'll put wherever that link goes, I'll put that link up there and check out my histogram video. But obviously you need to know the histogram, but you also need to know about the variables. You need to know what's important to your photograph, what you know what you need. It depends on what lens, what lens you're using. If you're using a nifty 50 like that one, if you're using a 35 mil like that one, or if you're using something like a zoom, something that zooms, you need to know what your minimum uh, fo shutter speed can be. Now, if you're if you're out doing street photography, you might say, well, okay, I want I want to freeze people as they move by. I want to get depth of field so that I'm gonna I'm not gonna miss focus and I want to expose properly so that when I get back, I haven't got to lift my, 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 my exposure in, in post and everything gets dirt, uh, gets like distorted and, and grainy. So um, a lot of cameras like the Fuji are what they call ISO invariant, so you can almost ignore ISO completely, but Canons and some of the other ones, I don't think Panasonic is, um, or Olympus, they're not ISO invariant, so you have to get the, the ISO right in camera to a degree. Now, Sometimes with street photography, it's actually better to shoot high ISO because it means that you can shoot the F8, it means that you can up your, sh your shutter speed, it means you can do zone focusing, it means that you can just set your camera and forget it. Now, obviously this video is specifically for street photography, for events photography, for some parts of a wedding, for wildlife photography, travel, that sort of thing. I wouldn't say that this video really applies to uh, landscape photography. So obviously if I'm doing a landscape photograph, I want my ISO to be as close to base as possible, um, just so I get like more dynamic range, you know, a cleaner image. So if we do need to crop, if we need to print big, um, and it just looks nicer. Um, now with street photography, we're not pixel peepers, are we? So with street photography and uh, events photography, it's all about getting the shot. It's about getting the shutter speed, it's about getting the right aperture, it's about metering for the right light. So we've got those images. Um, now, it's it's almost better just to see ISO as gain, as, as volume. So you, you, you wanna listen to your speakers, you turn up the volume, you don't really care where that knob is, where that dial is on your amp. You just turn it up until it suits your listening volume, your listening needs. So with, 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 with new cameras, it's definitely a case that you can shoot up to 6400 and not have any issues. Now I'm gonna show you a, um, a photograph, I'm gonna pop it up here. It's, I took this a couple of years ago on, an, on a workshop in Brighton. Brighton, I think it was. Now I was using um, a filter on the front of the lens and I was using flash. Now I knocked, the filter on the front was actually a variable ND, it wasn't a fixed ND like I normally have. It was a variable one because I forgot my fixed one. And I knocked it and I didn't realize I knocked it, but when I look back at the photograph, because I had flash, you can't tell what the ISO is. Now obviously I know because I can see the metadata, but I'm gonna put the picture up there. At the end of the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you <laughs> the metadata for this photograph. And I want you to see if you can actually tell what that ISO is. Because I'm because I was using flash and there's lots of light going to the subject, it actually proves that ISO is irrelevant in good light. Now, if I took that photograph, say ISO, for example, it's ISO 800. It's not, but let's imagine it's ISO 800. If I took that in the same settings with no flash whatsoever, all the shadow areas would have lots of noise. And that's not because of the ISO, that's because the, what they call signal to noise ratio. So there's less light getting to the sensor. So it's actually the, the lack of light that causes um, noise, not grain, noise, um, 
not the ISO itself. So you can shoot, say, a stupid ISO, but as long as you've got lots of light there, you can barely notice any, any noise. Of course, noise is very easy to get rid of. A blurry image isn't. Before we get any further, I need to ask you a favor. Check out my new website, because I've just finished it, and it's uh, I think it's really cool. So you let me know what you think of the new website. Check out, let me know if you, let me know if you find any uh, spelling mistakes or any errors or pages that don't work. Uh, but specifically, check out my new zine. Now, I, I did a zine, F8 magazine, about two, two years ago when Ellis was poorly. And I created the zine because obviously we were in lockdown and whatnot. And, and due to Brexit and a few other political problems, uh, the, the postage part of the, the printed magazine was just a nightmare. So I've had to start something up again. I've done the digital version of my magazine. So it's literally my images this time. It's not people I was featuring like before. But it's not a picture book like you see with a lot of zines. It's actually got a lot of information about the image and about mistakes that I've made taking the image. So hopefully you learn from this video and then if you buy, it's a tenner, if you buy that zine um, or my other, I've got two zines on there, I've got one from Istanbul as well, um, you're massively supporting the channel as well. So I can do more videos. I'm probably going to be doing flipping 10 times more videos than I've ever done before at this rate because I've got way more time on my hands now. Um, but yeah, that'll be huge support for the for the uh, for the channel. So do do check out the new F8 magazines. Istanbul's on there, and um, this one that's my last three months. Basically, I'm going to do three monthly magazines. Um, this one's really really interesting as well. And then there's a special guest on there as well, who is incredibly talented for, uh, street photographer. Really really proud proud he's a friend. But the his zine is actually very educational. So do do check out that mystery special guests zine as well. It's absolutely incredible. So I'm really, really pleased to have that on there. So I'm gonna put up a few images that I've just taken this morning on the Fujifilm X-T5 with the Nifty 50. So that was the camera that we used, the Nifty 50 on there. Now, as you can see, it's in it's it's in 5.6 at the minute, F5.6. It's in ap aperture priority with manual ISO. And what I did is I took some photographs. Now you need to try this with your camera as well. I took some photographs at base ISO, which on this camera is 125. Then I took some. I took a photograph at 400. Everything else stayed the same, so the aperture stayed the same. The shutter speed would obviously change to compensate for um, for the ISO going up. One again at 800, one at 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12800. Now I know because I've been shooting Fuji for a long time. I know that I'm confident with where I'm confident with, and I know in daylight what these rolls are going to look like. But you need to do that as well. You need to put your camera on a tripod and do the same thing. I'll put those photographs up and you tell me if you think there's going to be much difference in those images. Now, with street photography, we're not pushing the shadows to the max like we do with landscape photography. We're not, we're not manipulating the raw file so much. I get it that uh, the higher ISO you go, the higher the ISO, the, the less dynamic range you're going to get. But if you're getting it right in camera, if you're getting the shutter speed and everything right in camera, and it's minor tweaking like we do for street photography, don't need to butcher the life out of the raw files, then there's not that much difference in good light. So do some testing because obviously that's going to influence you going forward. When you go on the streets, you're going to be able to use a different shutter speed. You're going to be using a better a better aperture because you know that you can trust your, shutter, your ISO because you've done some testing. You need to work with your settings when you're doing street photography. If the light says, well, I want to, I want to be at f5.6 because I want this, this is my depth of field. I love 5.6 on this camera, right? And I know everything I talk about is f8. But I love being at 5.6 on this because the depth of field is great. So I can shoot at two meters or infinity, two meters or infinity. If you see my back button focus video, I can go infinity, two meters, infinity, two meters. And at f5.6, that gives me, because obviously it's a crop sensor, gives me the equivalent of f8 on a full frame. That then means I can shoot at, say, um, a faster shutter speed than a, than if I was at f f8 or f11, so I can go to uh, 500 or 320 or whatever I need to, and I don't need to worry about the ISO because I know that in good light it's going to be okay. But I need to work with the settings. If I think oh 5.6 is it, it's still 6400, uh, I'm gonna have to halve the ISO. I'm gonna have to halve. You know I'm gonna. I'm going to compromise, but I'm going to look at my settings, my exposure triangle, think, well, okay, I can get away with f4. don't need to be at f5.6. I can get away with f4. Street photography doesn't need to be tack sharp, does it? So still, I can still focus, zone focus at f4, but then that's going to bring my ISO down. I think, well, okay, what does my shutter speed realistically need to be? My shutter speed doesn't need to be 500. It can be 200 um, because I'm standing still or whatever. So you just need to work with your settings and say, well, okay, I don't need to be at these settings because I took a photo of recently and um, I was at f11, 500th of a second. When I looked at the ISO, it was ISO 4000. And I was like, well, it's it's exposed fine, but I don't I didn't need to be ISO 4000. I could have halved the higher 
halved my aperture, halved my shutter speed, and the ISO would have been about, say, 1600. I mean, it wasn't a problem because obviously there's lots of light there, but just knowing that I could have compromised if needed to, if I, if I was in a darker area with less light, then obviously I'd have had to say, well, that's not going to work now. I'm going to have to halve my shutter speed, halve my aperture, whatever, just to work with the ISO as opposed to sort of, you know, crucifying images unnecessarily. If I don't need to be at f11, I don't need to be, do I? So just something to bear in mind. Now, we all know the exposure triangle, this fella, um, it's got your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO in it. Now, in my opinion, ISO is the third, is the, is the least important of the three. So depending on what you're shooting, sometimes the shutter speed is more important than the aperture. For example, you know, it might be Formula One or something like that. You don't really care about your aperture, you care about your shutter speed, uh, or, 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 or to a degree, landscape photography. Um, but ISO really isn't that important relative to everything else. Street photography, travel, you know, wildlife events that sort of thing it's not that important so just bear that bear in mind that the iso can be cleaned up you can clean the crap out with topaz and stuff like that you can clean the crap if you've not tried topaz this topaz is a um, third-party cleaning software which if you shoot wildlife photography you'll know about obviously and astro photography it's amazing for sharpening and cleaning iso so just bear in mind that these things are completely fixable so um yeah, right, so what I'll do now is I will show you that image again and actually tell you what the ISO was for that photograph. Now, if you can tell me, honestly now, that you could see that that looks like a 12,800 ISO photograph, you're telling me porky pies, because I've got it on my screen and I can't see it. Right? Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's more, but bear in mind that that image is clean as a whistle because of the flash. If there was no flash and that was ambient light or shade lighting, then yes, because there's less light, less signal to noise ratio, less light getting to the sensor, then that photograph wouldn't be as noise free. So just bear that in mind. Why should we use high ISO? So opting for high ISO actually gives you more benefits than than not. People that are, that want to go for the base ISOs for whatever reason, it don't make sense to me because then they've got an underexposed photograph, then they go into Lightroom or whatever, then they lift everything up and it crucifies the image anyway. So you might as well have shot with the better ISO, which would have bought your shutter speed up, which would have given you, you know what I mean? It just, I don't know. But either way, on, on Fuji cameras, um, there's a really cool thing called DR400. So DR is dynamic range. Now you can change DR400 to DR200, DR100 or auto. Now you can't, dynamic range 400 is amazing if you've got backlit subjects or, and it does affect the raw. If you're going to watch this now and tell me that it's only JPEG that it affects, it's just a nonsense. It does affect the raw. And there are other people that say that DR400 is exactly the same as shooting base ISO and just lifting the shadows and lifting. It's not. I've done tests on that. It's not. I've done lots of tests on it. It's it's not. It's definitely, and it wouldn't be in the flipping camera if it, <laughs> as an option if it was that, would it? So um, it is an amplification in camera. So it is, it is better. Now, DR400 means that you get more dynamic range from your RAW file. Now, you can only shoot DR400, which I use all the time in these flipping Fuji cameras for weddings and stuff like that. So handy if you you know if you got a bride's a bright bright bride's dress, DR400 is so handy because it means that you get all that tone retained and they're not clipping anything. It's really really handy. So it's really good, but you can't shoot with DR400 below. I think it's 640 ISO. Um, it just won't let you do it. Now I was doing a shoot, I took this picture a couple of weeks ago and I I was using the built-in ND on this Fujifilm X100V. I was using the built-in ND and I was at 15th of a second. I couldn't work out what my ISO wouldn't go down below 640 or whatever it was. And then I looked at the menu, I was like, oh right, it's because DR400's on. So sometimes you have to remember it's there, but it's such a powerful tool and you can't use it without using a higher ISO. And obviously you need to know that you're comfortable with the ISO. Better for zone focusing. If you watch that video, wherever it is, you'll know I'm a huge, huge advocate of zone focusing. I love getting my camera, sticking it at f8, and I love going to five inches of a second, manual focus, and I like going infinity, two meters, infinity, two meters. I, I, that's, I just love the way I to shoot like that. If you've got good light, then you can just walk around, set your camera for two meters, set your camera for infinity, and literally don't care about anything else. I love that you can do that, but it's so much easier to do that with higher ISO. If I'm comfortable with shooting, say, 2000 ISO or 3200 ISO, and it gives me F11, it gives me F5, uh, 500 of a second, whatever, for me, 3200 ISO is not an issue in, in good light. It's just not an issue, I don't care. Obviously, I wouldn't shoot like that for a wedding, <laughs> but, 
if a street photography, it means if I'm getting that depth of field, if it means I'm getting that fast focus, uh, fast shutter speed, and it means I can lock my 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 meter in, and it means I can lock in my focus um, zone. It's absolutely just do it. Just don't even question it because if I get back and I think, oh, it's a bit noisy, it won't be because these are great at ISO anyway. But if I get back and I look at the photo, I think, oh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but it shows me the noise. I can flip in topaz the crap out of it later on and just not worry about it. And it also means you miss less because with zone focusing, if I, sh if, I if I stick it at two meters and from f5.6, I'm not going to miss focus. If my ISO needs to stay down at 200 or 400 because I'm, I'm worried about the, the noise, it means that my shutter speed can't go to 250 or 500 or whatever, it means my aperture can't do it either. So it's just it just means I'm not gonna hit I'm not gonna miss any images. And just remember that ISO is easier to clean up. A noisy image is easier to clean up than a blurry image. You just can't if, if an image is blurry because you've used the wrong shutter speed because you've used the wrong ISO, you can't do nothing about it. You know, but you can always you can always do that. Um, and yeah, just try Topaz. If you've never heard of Topaz, I'm not sponsored, but wherever Topaz goes, I'll put Topaz up here. So check him out. Because he, I did recently, I, I did with my mate, um, I bought um, a massive stupid lens. I bought a big wildlife lens and um, I got into wildlife photography. Don't hate me. I got into wildlife photography, got bitten by the bug and really, really enjoying it. But I was at 12,000 ISO on the Nikon Z7, which is a crap camera for high ISO. <laughs> so um, yeah, the, Topaz the crap out of every single photograph. <laughs> But they come out great because 12,800 is fixable, uh, but a blurry image isn't. Right, I'm going to mention the zine again. Do check it out because honestly, if you if you've got ever if you've ever seen any of my videos and taken anything from them, buying my zine will massively help me and uh, help me keep the channel going. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's not a good time at the minute. So yeah, if you did that, it'd be amazing. Um, but do check it out. As I said, it's not just photographs. It's actually got a lot of how I could improve the photographs, what drew me to the shot, but also mistakes that I make. So I'm not trying to make the magazine just a picture book. I'm trying to make it more an, uh, an info zine. <laughs> an info zine. Right, anyway, um, I was gonna stick a video at the end of this showing you actually going out and taking some photographs, but I've probably been talking too much as it is. So I don't think I'll have a chance to do that. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Cheers for checking out the zine if you do. And yeah, let me know what you think of the website. Go and have a look at the website. If, I've, if there's any errors or anything, I did it all myself in about four days. So if there's any errors on the website, let me know. Oh yes, don't forget to go outside with your camera, stick it on a tripod and, do, and test your ISO. Very, very important. See you in the next one.